welcome back. Uh, today we're just going to play some under 2,000 events because apparently I can't manage to keep my rating above 2,000. Also, I've not managed to play enough games of Lee Chess on here lately, so I thought it would be an interesting experience or experiment to just try playing in a few of these. Um, so, I think it's kind of silly that I'm eligible for these things, because, you know, I've been over 2,000 on quite a few occasions on Lee Chess, but we'll see how this plays out. You know, maybe there is some merit to it. I did just finish playing in two um, bullet tournaments that were both under 2,000. Uh, I got wrecked pretty convincingly um, in both of those. And by that I mean the first one I went berserk the whole time. The second one... Um, the second one I just played normally and still didn't win. I took second, which is respectable, but... Given my past rating, I would be expected to score better than second um, in a field where, okay, my current rating isn't 2,000, and I get that the rating system is accurate and stuff, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm just out of form. Because we've seen for quite a few months I've maintained ratings higher than the ones you currently see on the screen. Um, oh, I'm playing against the number two guy in the tournament and just handling this like it's bullet, you know, because just out of impulse. But also it's kind of fun to play this way, to just go with the flow and intuit everything and just hope that things work. It's good hope chess. Um, I kind of want to put the bishop back here. I don't know why. But yeah, I think this is a silly way to play. I think it could be fun. And we'll see just how good it turns out to be. Um, if b5, I just play a4 directly. If that, I play to control the f4 square. But also I'm maybe threatening bishop h6, so they probably just move their rook on f8 away. Um, all right, we're going to hit this queen. The queen's going to move, and then I drop the bishop on h6. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that was pretty unexpected. We're going to learn something this game, apparently. And I'm not sure what I'm going to learn, but definitely there will be a lesson in here somewhere. Like here, I could have just played knight a4, um, winning a piece directly. I didn't take the time to calculate it, and I'm up a minute. And playing this quickly is atypical for me. Um, yeah, there we go. You found the good move. So, just so I don't drop my stuff, we're going to guard it. There might still be combinations where he can grab the pawn. I really should calculate this instead of just playing it, but, you know, since we're playing for an audience, we're going to wing it. All right, we take one of these and claim that we have superiority here, though we really don't. Um. So, I'm not sure what the follow-up idea is in this position. Because h5 is kind of not uh, in the cards. I guess I could move my knight up to c5 into e6. I guess that's a thing. And they're just winging it, you know? Oh, that's kind of funny. He could take on d4. Taking on d4 was the move there just for what it's worth. Uh, we'll take here and shove this forward and forget the fact that we just hung the knight, you know. Uh, who needs the queen? How many seconds is a queen worth? 
Oh, my game's still IRL. I did change it. Twitch didn't ch accept the change. Let's change that to game chess. Alright. Thanks for letting me know. I did try to change it. This web interface is clunky. Um, Alright, we'll take that and try not to get murdered over here. Um, and, you know, just push the pawn. Yes, pawns must be pushed, etc. Um, well, this could be fun, now couldn't it? Alright. So I did subject my rook to a pin there, but I think it's okay. Because we got this skewer. See, we had this planned from the very beginning. Easy. Other than the part which didn't work, we had this all planned. Free rook. Easy. See, that was the number two guy in the tournament. We got this. Yeah, now regardless of how that's listed on Twitch, um, the fact that I've got leechess.org in the title should feature it on the site. So theoretically, being on Leechess front page should be worth at least five viewers. Um, people who can tell me that it's not set up right. Probably more than five, if I had to guess. Um, all right. Again, I don't know why I'm playing this like bullet. I guess it's fun. But, um, yeah, I could probably score better if I slow down a bit. Okay, I'm going to try to open the G file. He's going to try to open the G file, and it's going to be a beautiful thing when this thing we cooperated on occurs. Oh, he's not doing it. Okay. Well, this should be fun. I know his plan A wasn't to put his queen off sides here. Um, I don't really have a way to exploit that per se, but it's just weird. Um, well, no, I get this. I get that. So this weirdness does translate into some kind of gain. It's not a very strong gain, but it, it is a gain. We'll take it. Um, yeah, that's a nice little bishop we've got there. So he's going to play knight e1. He might prepare it somehow first, but ultimately his plan there is playing knight e1. Why don't I try to trade off this bishop? Or something. Um, okay. I've kind of put all of my pieces on bad squares. Let's get this rook out and into the game. There's 91. Did I not call it? Alright, so... Um, yep, and now he plays the other predictable move in the position, to which I react with the predictable reaction. And he counter-reacts with the predictable counter-reaction, and soon I'm going to play g5, but I don't want to play it too early because that makes it easy for him to plan. And I don't know. Uh, maybe queen d7 hitting the a-pawn, because he's probably going to forget about it. Um. Alright, so let's see how quickly he forgets about the a-pawn. Um, fine. I guess I do have to push g5 and tuck my bishop in. Because he's not just immediately conceding this battle. Okay, I walked into a fork. It's not the worst fork, but it loses me a pawn. A point, a pawn, however you want to say that. 
He didn't take it, so we're going to put the bishop back. Um, he's still got this sacrifice on g5 that ends in the fork. I really should do something about that. There we go. We've done something about it. But also I forgot about the pawn on a4. Got to keep my eye on the ball. All right. There's the knight e1 again. So how do I get this knight out? Um, how do I develop my knight? Okay, put this back. Oh, he's actually attempting to do some development here. All right, I found a way for my knight to escape. But if he plays knight g4 immediately, then I have to delay my little adventure. Otherwise, I do get to move this. Um, yeah, no. Literally, anything... If he just played knight g4 there, I would not have been able to play this immediately. Uh, so then we go back. And again... I've just been slowly making progress here. Alright, he forgot about it again. We'll take it. And then just go back. Alright. Um, no, I don't have anything lethal here. Kind of wish I did. I'm going to just take that. Yep, yep, yep. Queen takes. Check. Alright, and then go back. Alright. So, I'm not sure that I've got anything crushing here. Um, my bishops do cover all the axis squares for his queen, so there's that. Right, so let's trade queens and play out this knight endgame, which looks heavily in my favor. Looks can be deceiving, but... Who doesn't enjoy a good endgame? I mean, there are quite a few chess players who don't enjoy endgames, but who doesn't enjoy a good endgame? That was a good one. Oh, I've actually got over 2,000, so... Alright. I wasn't... I didn't really think I'd make it over 2,000 so quickly in this event. I wonder how high my rating can go. And whether I'll be able to maintain that 2,000 within the tournament. So if he takes, he recapture. If he doesn't recapture... Well, he is going to take that at some point. Or... I think I've gained enough tempi to do this. And if he plays that way, I can try to win this material. And if he plays that way, then I can kick the bishop again and play f4. Maybe I have better here. Um, oh, my knight's getting undermined. That's annoying. Alright, so he's just gonna move the queen. But then I get to play b5 and... You know, my pawn structure doesn't look so bad. I think this is a decent pawn structure. Could be mistaken. Um, I've been on the receiving side of something like this, so I know how effective it can be. At least against me, it can be effective. Yeah, I guess we did miss out on quite a few of the highlights of that particular endgame. Didn't really get played out. It just uh, got timed out. Uh, that's okay. 
So there's no bishop c5, so I'm... Oh. Alright. Uh, I'm going to do one thing before taking the bishop. And that's make this thing more complicated. I actually didn't see bishop d5, I just got really lucky. Um, that I have a hard counter to bishop d5. So, yeah. Just to be good at chess, you have to have, have some skill and have to have some luck. Um, some people do much... Uh, to, uh, rely a, a bit more on luck than on skill. And when I'm playing on stream, it's all luck. There's no skill here, or is there? Alright, so... I'll just trade some material. Um, assuming our opponent will allow it. Whatever. Take my d-pawn. I didn't need it. We're gonna get rid of the back rank threat. And, you know, deal with the real threats in the position. There's quite a few ways he can bungle that. Um, so I'm just gonna force him to play, like, 50 accurate moves in a row. And if he plays like a machine and doesn't lose on time, he could probably hold this, but most people would have difficulty holding this position. I would just be blitzing moves as the defender here, although perhaps the most accurate move is to resign. Um, but no, certainly an attempt to defend could be made. All right, that was a good try. That was clever. There actually was a tactic there. Um, so, thankfully, I kept my wits about me and didn't fall immediately into the first tactic that appeared in the position. Um, and this is becoming challenging. All right, so... This is actually the most accurate move, I think, because it does activate my knight. It, yeah, he's not falling for anything obvious here. I play this not because it... I mean, yes, there is a clever, cheap shot there, but that's not why I'm playing it. I'm just playing it to activate my pieces. So, once my pieces are active... Um, then we'll worry about details. But yeah, there's all these knight forks, because knights are tricky pieces. Alright. We're playing this out, apparently. Cool. That's super cool. Yep. Just playing out a dead lost endgame. Just for funsies. Alright. Pretty sure I can win this. Pretty sure I understand how to win this endgame. Okay. That was cool. I hadn't actually gone and visit. I had other commitments come up today. Um, I think... So it's going to be running all weekend. I think tomorrow would be most convenient, unless more commitments just come up unbeknownst to me. Um, nah, I mean, 1600's excited to play against a 2000, whatever. He's fully entitled to play it out, because I've played out worse than that. I think it's a waste of his time to play it out, but um, he certainly has the right to do so. I've played out far worse. And I've actually won by doing so, so... Yeah. I can't shame him too much, but at the same time, like... Um, at some point you have to have some confidence in your ability and your opponent's ability. Um, okay. 
Okay, we'll just develop, do boring stuff. Because apparently this opponent's playing solidly. So there's nothing really I can do to refute a solid opening play. I can just counter with boring stuff. Alright, just kidding on the boring stuff. We're going to liven it up. Because we can. Not because it's good. It might be good. It might be horrible. I didn't really look. It looked fun. That was pretty much the consideration that went through my mind at that point. Is hey, that looks interesting. Um, and I played it. Alright, so we're going to castle and maybe get my rook into the game? I don't know. Alright, so I'm kind of down material at this point. Uh, my opponent's running for it, and I can't really blame him. It makes sense to run. Oh god, this position just keeps getting worse. Right, so I'm forced to play this rook exchange because I played rook d2 earlier, so my rook has nowhere to go. Um, yeah, this is pretty terrible. I just trap my knight. Um, but maybe I can trap his bishop, so... Maybe one good trap deserves another. Bishop f2... Bishop f2. There it is, bishop f2. Um, alright. Kind of out of ideas here. Maybe. Maybe not. Knights are good fun. Knights are fun, tricky pieces. So. Um, I think the key to making it interesting is play random moves until the point where you're just blatantly hanging material um, without a plan. Like, if you can sort of anticipate what your opponent's going to do, you can pretty much play anything. So I saw he was going to move that, and he's going to do that. And, like, he expects I'm not going to do anything whatsoever on the queen side. Which is kind of a bad expectation to have. It might be accurate, but I'm going to try something. Mm, yeah, I don't have anything. You got me. Well played. Does that put me back under 2,000? I mean, I did cross 2,000 during this tournament, meaning I'm not eligible to play in another under 2,000 blitz thing forever, but... Um, but yeah, I do usually swindle some wins out of things, so we do have to enjoy that. But yeah, I've been actually trying to play in like the under 2,000 bullet tournaments. Um, I have not managed to cross 2,000 again, which was just kind of my goal, is to get my rating back into a respectable position with respect to bullet, but I'm just not that good at bullet, apparently. I previously had like a 2150 rating, so I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Um, I guess it's just rust. I wonder how quickly that uh, sort of thing gets cleaned up. Bishop g5, bishop f6, queen f6, knight d2. That's not knight d2. There's knight d2. I'm a genius. Oh, alright, so... That's interesting. Um... Bam! Alright, knight a3's forced. I thought I had the knight trapped. I'm a little embarrassed that trap isn't actually completely working. But it still looks pretty cool. Alright, just keep my king in an active position, you know? Uh, do I play b4 yet? 
Now I think I activate my rook first and then play b4. But interpolate h5 first. Because bishop f5 is probably coming. And so this is the better place to activate the rook. It's the more active active rook, I guess. Um, Alright. Pawn takes? No, okay. I wasn't sure. Did not know my opponent's intent there. Uh, so we'll go back. And maybe I can provoke knight d4. Oh, knight d4 doesn't drop the knight anymore. Bummer. Uh, oh, damn it. I just hung a piece. For, like, no reason. I thought he couldn't... Bishops didn't go backwards. I just didn't see that bishop. Okay, well, we'll try to make this fun anyway. Well, I've got two minutes left. This is a fun breakneck pace I'm playing at. Alright. So be it. Um, can he defend this pawn? Maybe. Yeah, there is a thing in chess called perfectionism, where you try to hold on to everything without making any concessions ever. Um, and I think all of us are guilty of it at some point. Um, so, I'm trying to make my opponent's pieces overworked. Um, it's not more going that well here. Um, my rooks are active, but rooks are kind of predictable. Uh, so this is going to be a challenging endgame to win. He says as if he can win it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not sure where my rooks are going to go here. Oh, I should play a4. And like, a3 and hope chess. Because there's a nice sacrifice. If I get to play a4, a3, if he plays b3, I can just take on b3. And if pawn takes, my a pawn races. So that's the trap. Alright. Yeah, bullet's hard. Um, is this one of those things where, like, no. I reloaded the page. He's still thinking. He probably got pulled away from the computer at a most pivotal moment in the game. That sucks. Alright, well, I'll take the win. Oh, I'm in fifth place. My rating crossed 2,000 this tournament, and I'm in fifth. That's kind of weird. I had the same phenomenon happen, like... Well, n minus the crossing 2,000 thing. Um, I was playing in the under 2,000 bullet tournaments, and, like, despite having an excellent performance, um... There were players who had better performances, whose ratings were nowhere close to 2,000. It was just the weirdest thing. I've never seen any tournament outside of Lee Chess um, have that sort of behavior. Where a person um, would have their performance rating be so discrepant from their actual rating. Okay, so we're going to deny knight c4 and play this move, which I was going to play anyway. And if he plays d4, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to play bishop d6 regardless what he does. Um, although this is super sketchy. Yeah, I just walked into something. This is not good. So I have to do this, otherwise I'm losing material. 
Here I have knight f3 if I need it. I don't think I do though. I think I could play knight fd7 and hold here. No, I think I need this. We're gonna play it. It's the cowardly boring move followed by another typical predictable move. So um, we're just gonna enjoy playing some pretty boring chess here for a moment. Uh, he says he gets bored and drops two pawns. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That's a good move. That's well played right there. Yeah, that is a very accurate way to play this position. Um, I should try something more aggressive or I'm just going to get turned into dust here. So we're going to try um, just to spook him if we can. It looks like that operation spooking him didn't work, so I have to just trade queens, which allows him to exchange a pair of rooks if he wants to. I'm going to try to keep the rooks on because that's mad, honestly. Um, Alright, so rooks are still on the board. We're going to hit the f-pawn. Um, this looks fun. Yep, 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 and then you can triple on the f-pawn, and he can't even push f3 here. You could just take on c7. Oh. Didn't expect that. Um. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So now we're just going to pile on this piece that's on the majestic d4 square. Um, and play an ever so exciting rook endgame. Alright, do I have to play this first? Nah. We can do this directly. Um, so I need to activate the king because his king is too close to the action. Otherwise, there were some tricks that could apply. Uh, hang on. Now our king activity is pretty much reached critical mass here. Um, so my king can hold off his king and rook. Um, do I play c5? No, that doesn't win material, so we're going to stick with a more passive move here. Right, so he does get to play rook g4, and it looks impressive. Um, but once you get past that optical illusion, you realize that black's pieces are far more actively placed than white's. And that this is just a very difficult position for white to hold. Um... And black wins a rook. That's a rook sandwich. Alright. Now we just chop all the pawns. Like this one. And then go behind the pawn. And he races his, I race mine. Time pressure trick here. Um, ha! Okay, my bad. I fell asleep at the wheel. I've been up forever today, so forgive me for my ignorance here. Oh, he saw it. But did he see 
Um, what's the thing about Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Something about why kids like it. Yeah, okay, so... Okay, that makes up for the draw. Yeah, that was the other thing which occurred to me, is like, what is this um, nonsense that my opponent is typing? Oh, did we get paired with the same guy again? Okay, yeah, let's have some fun here. Oh man, I was going to play Budapest. He denied me my ability to play that. So instead we're just going to go win material. Um, let's go material hunting here. So I'm threatening to win the A pawn. This is not an easy opening to play if you've not prepped it. So that's the whole point of the um, tongue-in-cheek joke there. Yeah, I mean, okay, there are ways to play this that don't lose material, but um, there aren't very many. Okay, so let's hit that. So, okay, he didn't outright, um, like if you actually count what's still on the board, he's not dead yet, but um, his position's not what I would play for in an opening position. Then again, you've seen how I play openings. So I'm just saying, like, the fact that I got a reasonable position at all is just... Oh, I should have played this. Because there's that pin on the A file, which allows me to snap here, which allows me to take that. Um, and you know, it's just a fun position for black. Black's the one attacking, which is good fun. White's bishop on g3 looks silly. White's bishop on b3 is almost hanging. White just dropped, like, this monster of a fork, you know? Just take one of those, take one of these, check one of those. And so now the knight's moving away, so I can just go after g2. Let's take it directly, um, and then go back, you know, nice simple chess. There's a fun little tactic, although it doesn't win material, it just forces my opponent's hand. Um, okay, fine. Go ahead, take it. I didn't wasn't using that one anyway. Alright, I should not have played that, but he wasn't paying attention, so... Did it really matter? Cool. Alright, yeah. Yeah, likewise, LC. We're going to try to win this tournament, which probably entails, like, just playing better moves. D4? Okay, now D4? That's not D4. It's probably a mouse slip. He probably intended to play D4 and just played something else accidentally. Alright. Oh man, I wanted to castle opposite wings, but he made it ridiculous for me to do so. So we're doing so. Um. Um. So G3 is kind of, well no, actually G3 just hangs material, so there is no direct refutation of my play. There's just the indirect observation that my position just looks silly. Um, 
there's no direct refutation forcing line that just crushes what I've done. All right, fine. You take a pawn, I'll take a pawn. You take a pawn, I'll take a pawn. Let's see where we end up when we're done. I'll take a pawn. Take one of these. One of those. All right. Queen d5, queen d6, knight d6. Sure, one of those. This looks fun. You know, at some point we could realize this isn't bullet. Um, we could. And we could play a good game. Or we could just continue playing what we're doing here. Um, which seems to be a lot more fun. At least to me. Um, since I seem to be winning this. Hmm. I should take that and then go after this pawn and once oh. I have to take it this way. That's kind of disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I had greater aspirations for this position. Um Oh, that is astute. Um, <laughs> that is less astute. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at chess. Not really. Alright, good game. Uh, that was funny. Um, so what do we got here? You've got quite the fishing adventure planned for Monday. Oh, nice. Probably a mountain lake, because the fly fishing rivers aren't yet open. Well, um, yeah, it's been forever since I've done any fishing. Um, but that's good that you're able to go enjoy the outdoors and um, have fun fishing with other people, I assume. Or it could be a solo adventure, which could be fun too. Knight c6. Okay. He's not falling for it. I just gave him a free tempo. Um. Alright, but what's a tempo between friends? Or enemies, you know? Pawn takes, please, and then g6 next. Would really help my um, adventures trying to win this thing. Okay. Guess I'll take this. Oh, he did play pawn takes. I did not anticipate pawn takes. Oops. Um. My position's kind of falling apart here. To put it lightly. <sighs> Looks like people are having good fun playing in these under 2,000 events. You can tell by the awesome comments they're leaving behind that they're just having a wonderful time playing these. If there's nothing more that they would like to do than to play in an event and accuse their opponents of underhanded tactics. It really warms your heart. That was the other thing, like, so even if there's some chess skill-based merit to these tournaments, like, you know that there's going to be people, uh, people who complain about any given system. So, it just seems to me like this under X tournament thing, while it has its merits, um, is just going to be like a target for people to complain about. 
there's really nothing you can do to um, I don't know round the square into a circle or circle the square or whatever the metaphor is um, All right, so I just tuck my king away, right? He plays bishop a3, I play my king into the corner. Everything's perfectly safe. Oh, really? Because, like, I changed it from IRL twice already. Um... Set game chess game. Yeah, I don't know. I've got to figure out the right way to set that. Um, let me fix that somehow. I guess what that means is that people are only discovering this, well, by way of Lee Chess's front page and by way of just you who tend to follow this channel. Um, so this is the super secret stream because I can't seem to figure out how to set the game on Twitch. Um, I don't think, like, getting it listed under the game chest is going to make any difference in the viewer count, though. I could be wrong. Here, let's sack the rook. That seems fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's a super secret stream. Uh, no, really, I just need to go back here. Type in chess like a tenth time. No, that didn't do it. All right, have to refresh the page. Oh, uh, wait, so if I take d5, eh, it doesn't quite work. We're going to go back here. The threat's to f7. He sees it. I'm going to go back here. Threat's bishop f4. I'm not sure what the next threat is, but we're going to play this and simultaneously try to fix the twitch thing. Alright, so chess. Alright, so you type in chess, then you pick chess from the drop down after you've typed it in, and then after you've done all of that, then you have to click the update information button and then wait for the page to submit. After that, it might work. Um, so hopefully that fixes it. Yeah, no, I've... Um, so you'll note that Nightbot actually is not here anymore. I've now introduced uh, PhantomBot which is the open source um, chatbot. So the idea is that it's Java based, it's open source, it, you can add your own source code and existing modules and whatever to it, which could be kind of exciting. All right, so I've blocked his king out of my uh, king side. It's still blocked out. There's nothing he can do to force me to break that fortress. And now my king can invade. Uh, although he can play a5, after which he can no longer access that side of the board. Um, whoops. One second while I go win this. It's really a game of rock, paper, scissors um, of end game play here, where he has to guess what I'm going to play before I play it. It's kind of a tricky game.
See? End games are easy. Alright, so... Um, yeah, I mostly just do AI stuff and um, tell people... Uh, well, I offer feedback uh, just based on my opinions. and um, But no, all the developers on the team are quite skilled. They don't really need me to code review for them. But... Uh, would it be too boastful? Like, I know my rating IRL isn't exactly 2,000, but given just my coaching experience IRL and, um, I don't know, everything I've done with chess, I like to think I'm somewhat qualified to offer positions which I think would help people improve. And so I'm always trying to push Lee Chess to do complicated things that it was never originally designed to do. Uh, with the hope that it'll make the site better for everybody. Um, so I'm always providing feedback on current development. Just, I know there are tons of strong uh, players on the site, but I like to think in my own way I do help uh, try to steer the site in a positive direction. But yeah, no, I do the AI stuff. Um, at least in terms of um, offering support for multivariant Stockfish and keeping that in sync with the latest version of the Stockfish source code. Just always applying the updates and fixing bugs when they do come up. Uh, I don't handle the actual deployments of the AI. I'm not really a web developer, um, but Oh, wait, is VSIM playing in this too? That'd be cool. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. Yeah, no, I mostly just focus on the stockfish coding. Um, and if they need somebody to go dig deep down into, like, what's going on with some evaluation in some position, and is that a bug or is that not a bug? 99% of the time, the answer is not a bug. 1% um, of the time, the answer is, I can't reproduce that on my machine. And 0, 0.00 something percent of the time, um, the answer is, oops, I messed up. And that's a reproducible bug, and it's something easy enough to fix. Um, Um, I did, at one point, enhance uh, Lee Chess's support for draw claims. Or, I'm sorry, for draw adjudication. Um, that was exciting. Uh, we got quite a bit of feedback after that change. Because there were legitimate bugs that had to be fixed at the same time. We had to make some decision about the right way to handle it. And... We took a close look at the USCF rules, at the FIDE rules, at um, the rules for other online chess sites, and came up with uh, basically a set of rules that seems to work in most positions. Um, you want to turn them with separate teams. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not the web developer. I don't know how hard that is. One thing I do want to try to do, if I ever find time to do it, would be knockout tournaments. I know there nobody's really clamoring for it, um, but I think it would provide a basis for experimenting with other formats. Because I know everybody's asking for Swiss, and I have my own opinions about whether Swiss will be successful or useful or whatever. Um, our Lee Chess current stance on it is not going to happen sort of thing. Um, geez, what a mess. How did I mess this up so badly? Um, but, you know, I think that if we get some other formats out there and see that it's not too hard to support and that people actually enjoy things like Knockout, and I'm sure Knockout would be a huge success, um, then we'll figure out that other formats really aren't that difficult and we should support a variety of formats. 
Um, so that's something I do want to work on at some point. Assuming I can find the time and energy to do it. Um, I still got 10 defects or issues in my stockfish backlog because like clearing things out of that backlog seems impossible. As soon as I've cleared it, people report everything they can think of as a bug and it becomes like it, it's I don't know it never ends <laughs> just keep rolling the rock up the hill and it comes tumbling down but at some point maybe I might perhaps be able to make enough progress that I can focus on other uh, endeavors um, so, yeah, I'm crushing tonight, but tonight, like, I'm playing in the under 2000 event. And if you knew, like, if you've seen my previous streams, you've seen that, like, I've been over 2000 months ago. So the fact that I'm crushing in an under 2000 event is kind of silly. Like, what am I doing here? Although, I'm in second place. And dude in first... Must be a new player to leech us or something, I don't know. But if he's a new player, then how come he's winning all his games and his rating's just like, not 2,000? That's what confuses me, it's like... Not so much that... Um, that I'm not gonna win every time I play one of these things, but like, I seem to get more rating points than other people. Which I think is just weird. Um... Yeah. That's the other thing. Oh, um, I mean, if you'll uh, permit a mathematical digression, um, I want to try making, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think this is not too mathematical. I think you could understand it. But first, let's watch the confetti. Wait, can I not get to my leech chest window. Here it is. Um, so we'll have confetti in a minute from now. Hopefully I'll take one of the top three positions, but you never know. And all it takes is somebody in third, fourth, fifth, whatever to win a game and suddenly I'm no longer in second. Um, so man Seems like people in the chat room are super salty there. Yeah, I've got ideas to make these tournaments more exciting, I guess. He started at 1906 and has only made it up to 1975, so he must have played a lot of games and then just suddenly been on this amazing hot streak. Which, I mean, that's great. That definitely can happen. Um, so kudos to him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have the highest performance rating of anybody in the event, but that's not how it's scored. It's not a Swiss. Not nearly. Not that Swiss is scored that way either, but yeah. So we're going to digress briefly here, um, just to take a quick look at Wikipedia. There's this thing for k-means clustering. Oh. That's a nice little image. I'm not sure if you see that overlay when I hover like that. Uh, might be easier to view it that way, but I think Lee Chess could benefit from some of this math, simulations, cool stuff, you know. I don't know if I'll ever have time to implement this. Uh, people have implemented pretty awesome libraries that'll do this sort of thing automatically. And the point would be that if you could do this kind of thing, you know, you could run tournaments that instead of calling it the under 2000 tournament, you would call it the sectional Super Blitz Arena, and everybody would join it, and at the end of the tournament, it would put you into sections based on, well, throughout the tournament, you'd be in groups or sections or whatever. I don't know. It's something that requires uh, ample consideration, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's not an easy thing to do. Alright, is there another under 2,000 thing I can join? Because that seems to... okay. Um, 
Apparently not the Blitz Arena, because we just exceeded 2,000 there. Um, yeah. Looks like there's no under 2,000 things I can join. Bummer. I do see that the Eastern Bullet Arena is coming up, so... Oh, <laughs> no, Acerick's not going to play that tonight. Right. I was thinking, let's Acerick's baby. He would play in that. Uh, okay, we'll pretend this is an under 2,000 event, even though it really isn't. We're going to have some fun. Hey. Oh boy. So, let's see, Leech Us is a great platform, but need new stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Ten, nine, eight, the other thing is I have that site I'm supposed to be maintaining, the Relay Chess at Work site. Two, one. Oh, I've spent so many hours trying to make that all work perfectly. And so far, I've not managed to play a single rated game on it, so... Um, I'll figure out a solution at some point, but it's not easy. Oh, you saw it! Alright. Um, well, I should try to do things that are less obvious. Okay. I'll just play C3. Oh, he's letting me plant my knight here. That's awfully courteous. Alright, let me just plant the knight there again. Watch for him to do this. Do that. Does he drop the sea pawn? Now does he drop it? Um, he didn't drop the sea pawn. I'm impressed. Alright. Okay, I guess I should expel the bishop. Yeah, I don't know how people keep track of all this stuff. Alright, free pawn. Minus the fact that I get my king mated for taking it. But otherwise, it's a free pawn. Ah, uh, shit. I gave back the free pawn. He didn't want it. I don't blame him, but... I would have taken the g3 pawn. Uh, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, just, I don't know. I've gotta find something here. Oops. Brilliant. I walk into mate in one instead. Um, you got me. That's high quality chess there. Alright, so. Yeah! We're on a good start here. That's the Swiss Gambit. If there ever was one. The Swiss Gambit is where you play this dubious play in round one to either win or lose it. The understanding that if you lose the first round, you might be able to, like, win the rest against weaker opposition. So that's the rationale of a Swiss Gambit. Um, Alright, I'll just develop. And just continue development. Easy. The Llama Lord makes this look so easy. How does he do it? I don't get it. Chess is hard. I guess part of it involves actually like studying the game and knowing what you're doing. I suppose that doesn't hurt. Or would you call that cheating? I don't know. People who actually understand the game. Oh, free rook? No, not quite. It felt free. Um. Alright, so... I don't know. We'll play f5. How bad could f5 be? 
can go back and try to something. So I should see what. Um, oh, that's a free bishop. I should see what Phantom Bot can do in terms of channel censorship. Just dealing with people who are over trolls. Okay. Just take that and then win the rook. Oops, shit. You got me. Can I, like, win material, please? Okay. So we won a game. Oh. Alright. That works, too, I suppose. Yeah. I need to find a better automated solution for this, although I do appreciate moderator's help on that sort of thing. Alright, so... Um, just develop the pieces, right? Okay, and then... Oh, he's gonna play g4? No, no g4. g4 doesn't make sense, but it's... Um, it's, it's a thing you could reasonably expect the opponent to do, it's just not sound. Now it works, but instead he played something else, and I'm just winning. Oh, except for that one little detail that I don't get to keep my knight on the board. That was an excellent knight. That was, like, the most brilliant knight I've seen in quite some time, but... Um, don't hang the rook. And we hit h3. He's got to defend it. Uh, he does defend it. And I want to try to double and triple and quadruple and stuff, and it's not so easy to do. Um, but we're going to try to do it anyway. Ay, ay, ay. I'm not sure that works. It looks like it might work. Okay, it's working already now. And yeah, that's nice. I spooked him. Yeah, we played some tournaments. I played three in a row. Only streamed the last of them. I thought there would be more under 2,000 events, and we just ran out of them. Yeah, it's nice that it worked out. I don't know that the play was that inspired, but... Um, Alright, so take me. Uh, okay, let's try this. Castle! <laughs> Uh, nobody expects the castle move there, because it's a terrible move, but it's fun. Alright, so yeah, I'm just crushing it. Easy. Just don't keep my king on c1. Yeah, my king needs to find shelter somewhere else. Um... Man, if this position were slightly different, I would race my king over to a4. Not even very different, just ever so slightly different. Go ahead, take the knight. I should have just forked and won the queen. Um, and let's just win some material. There. 
There's a material grab. And we'll just push. See? Chess can be easy. You just need to get lucky. It's all luck. Right. So, let's keep pushing. And go back. And just drop the queen over here. Spook him a bit. Oh, let's check. Mate. Alright. That's not bad. Ah! Yes, you're right. And now, um, I've actually got my rating almost over 2,000. I'm playing like an under 2,000, so maybe it's still accurate. Here we go. We got him thinking, guys. Got him thinking. See, we can play like an under 2,000. This style of play is respectable. Ish. Um, perhaps not sound. But you can get away with a lot of fun stuff. If you just uh, calculate like a madman. And don't ever miss a single tactic. You can get away with a lot of things. Of course, bishop takes his best. Yeah, we're just going to protect that. Okay, and then double, triple, whatever on the file. Um, put all the pawns on dark squares. Hit the backward pawn. Free pawn. Easy peasy. Check. I don't know. There should be something here. It definitely feels like I've earned something. Uh, okay, I've sacked material accidentally, but my opponent didn't take it. Alright, GG, man. It's a draw. Okay, yeah, that opening is a bit silly, isn't it? Oh, okay, apparently we're going berserk today. Um, who doesn't enjoy going berserk? Uh, I feel kind of honor-bound to return that. If only because I am the captain of Team Berserkers, so, um, you know, it's kind of befitting that I observe the practice once in a while, even though I'm pretty terrible at it. Uh, okay, let's do this. Yeah, see? I'm just giving up a rook just to make things exciting. Oh, that's a legal move. Yeah, he got me. See? Easy. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Um, why is this called Eastern? I don't know. I assume because it's more convenient for a certain part of the world, but I don't know, to be honest. Sack. Oh, come on. Can I at least get the piece on the correct square? I'm trying to sack it. Alright, let's do this. Here we go. And just push all the pawns. Here's a pawn. 
There's a pawn. Everywhere is a pawn. This might not be sound. Alright, so... Maybe I shouldn't play like that. Oops, yeah, maybe that's just giving away a queen. Okay, I'm conceding a bullet game. <laughs> Alright, that's great. Um, okay. So maybe I should try to play actual chess. I don't know. It's like I don't have the patience to play bullet. I mean, who does? Um, oh shit, pawn takes, alright, fine, you got me, uh, okay, these people are good, yeah, there's my queen, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how I ever got my rating over 2,000 in bullet. Um, turns out these people are pretty good at bullet. Alright. So, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I should be doing something... I don't know. Less hope chessy and more, like, real chess -y. Hope chess is so much fun. I mean, there's plenty of creative ideas to explore in a real game of chess. You don't have to do this complete madman insane stuff. Well, let's caveman attack it, because why not? Uh, fine. We'll retreat. I have a 1600 beating back my attack. So I guess the expectation is that I should win this on time or something. Because he's not playing poorly. He's playing good moves. For me to... Okay, he did drop a pawn. For me to win this, he's either got to play some mistake or I've got to play better. And we know which of those is not going to happen. Um... Alright, so that's a pawn. That's a pawn. That's a pawn. Not really. I just wanted to say it. Alright, does he take? Ooh, this is risky. Alright, we won a game, guys. <sighs> so, you're supposed to use the eastern opening. There's an eastern opening? Does it involve pushing all of my pawns? Because if so, then I'll play it. Um, Alright. Hey, I won a pawn. I'm the greatest. I won another... Well, that's not a pawn. Here, take my knight. I didn't want it. Fine, don't take it. Uh, okay, I'll just develop. And develop. a position without pieces on squares. Um, okay. 
Okay, and we'll just put this on the second or the first or the zeroth rank. If ever somebody invents a zeroth rank, we'll put the piece there. All right, triple things on the second rank. Um, protect the pawn. Check. Check. Oh, not a check. All right. I do think the 3D board helps me a bit with my over-the-board play. It certainly helps more than the 2D board does. Um, yeah. <laughs> you could probably get a good helping of rating points. Especially if you get paired with me. Because uh, apparently I'm not playing my top form. My top form is like 2150. Um, and I'm nowhere near that at present, so. I'm just walking around a heap of rating points, just if anybody wants them. All you gotta do is get a pairing, and um, pretty much be guaranteed to get the points. Alright. But hey, we're having fun playing, so um, having fun's got to be worth more than rating points, right? They really need to have a fun rating, though, so like you can get points for just having the most fun game. Alright, I guess I'll need to develop. Here, let's take that. Uh, take this. Oh, I gave him a tempo. I did not mean to give him a tempo. I gave him another tempo. I'm being generous today. Fine. Mate and one. I walked right into it. I'm so bad. That's amazing. I'm in 11th place, guys. And I'm playing like a fish. Um, but I'm in 11th, so... Yeah. Um, so yeah, good luck to anybody playing. Gaining rating points and this stuff can't be that hard. I just played this on a whim, because it's been forever since I've seen it. Oh, I guess I should have looked at my opponent's rating before picking something so evil to play. Um, because like, if I'm seeking wisdom by playing an opponent and hoping they'll refute my opening play, um, I should at least pick the right opponent to play that sort of thing against. And if they're if I outclass them on rating, um, they're not going to refute my opening play. They could try, but it's not going to be easy. So queen e2 is probably the sane way to approach that particular position. We're going to have g3 here. No g3. Oh, that's a good move, though. It forces me to run away for a tempo. But this is going to be... Um, wow. That's messy. Well, let's check. This doesn't protect the queen, but it looks like it does. But it doesn't really. But it was enough to confuse that opponent. Alright, so what do we got? Oh. White goes first, right? So I should move if I get the white pieces. Instead of just waiting for my opponent to move. Um. Oh. Okay. We can work with this. We've got an active king. 
nothing to fear here. The fear itself. And the fact that I just dropped the deep on with check. Um, turns out that narrating and playing is perhaps not the easiest uh, activity. Okay. Let's get out of this mess before I dig myself deeper into the hole. Okay. Not going to hang that pawn twice. Keep the pieces out. Well, that's clever. Might not be successful, but it was clever. Uh, okay. Sure, I'll play this. Hmm. Really? Okay. I would recommend, like, opening an endgame book at some point. Because you'll find that, like, allowing your opponent to have a zillion protected past pawns is not the best thing you can do in an endgame. Yep, yep, yep. I misplayed this, but that's okay. Whatever. Ha! Victory is mine. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's a thing. Apparently, just play random moves, confuse your opponent, and win on time. Bam! All right, see? Well, it's easy. Just play random moves. All right, so this knight's kind of misplaced. Ah, clever. All right, fine. Shit. All right, see? We had this under control the whole time. Easy peasy. Just knocked out the number two player. How hard could that be? Easy. Super easy. You can't be too happy about that. Just beat Zefcat. Nice. Yeah, short range moves help a lot. So the fact that I was doing a lot of those king moves that were all going to adjacent squares probably helped a bit. Alright, you saw my one move threat there. Um. Oops. Uh, it's a gambit. If my opponent takes it, uh, 
I don't know how to ungambit out of this. That's a way out. It's a pretty disgusting way out, but it is a way to escape. Oh shit, that was the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, accidental queen gambit. It might work. It doesn't look very good. Oh, I should have just taken. Didn't see that I could take. Um, gosh, that would have been beautiful. Yeah, my queen gambit might actually work out here. That's pretty fantastic. Double check. Nice. Whew, okay, see? We might get our way back to 2000 somehow after all. That's all that I was trying to do this stream anyways. Just get back to 2000. So here we are playing the King's Indian Defense in a bullet game. Um, which seems... Perhaps not like the easiest thing to play um, under these circumstances. Okay. That should help me considerably. I need a move. That's a move. That's a move. It's not great, but it's not terrible. See? We got this. Easy peasy. Take that. Oh, mate and one. Oh, that was terrible. Oops. Um, well, other than the mate and one, that was a pretty fun game. The mate and one kind of added a damper on it. Um, But yeah, that was an interesting King's Gam or King's Indian. Um, castles. I just play here. Exchange, exchange, exchange. Play this. He's gonna hit my knight. I'm gonna move my knight somewhere. He takes my pawn. I don't know. Cause I just need to keep playing moves here. Oh, my opponent's rating is 2272. That could explain a thing or two here. That could help explain how it is they managed to get such a busted position so quickly. Um. I thought I had something clever there. I didn't. Uh, all right. Sucks.
All right. I mean, yeah, maybe I could have won that on time, but I was just severely embarrassed by that point. I was too embarrassed to play it out. Even though it was like six seconds and four seconds. Also, I think any half competent player can mate in that kind of time constraint. So. Um, I figured why play it out. Shit. Queen F6. It's the same move there. Alright. Let's concede that. I don't want to play it out anymore. Alright. Let's try to get some good games in here, though. If there can be such a good thing as good bullet games, let's try to play them. This doesn't feel right. Oh, that's the move. Um, I'm hoping he forgets about my rook in h4. Bingo! Ha 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 ha! That's such a cheapo. That's a beautiful cheapo. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I should be ashamed of that, but how could you be ashamed of something so diabolical? Alright, that was beautiful. And just how diabolical it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I've been monologuing, saying silly things throughout this event, but, um, I think overall it's been okay. I've had a number of pretty silly games here. That's, uh, I don't know about this. I super do not know about this. Queen a5, b4 looks reasonable. Yeah, maybe I'm just winning material here. Accidental opening novelty is brilliant. Um, I have to remember that for tournament play, because this seems to work quite well. take this. Uh, 
Yeah, I think this opening play worked out. What do you guys think? Do you think this worked? I guess I should activate my final rook with devastating effect. Uh, let's see. I can't say I'm familiar with that character. Part of it might just... The lame aspect of the voice may come from the fact that I'm just exhausted. Um, I certainly can enunciate more clearly. So, and my opponent's playing some excellent pragmatic chess. Oh, nice. Um, Alright, so we'll play. Oh, I don't know about my move, but it seemed to work out okay. Shit. This doesn't work. Not even remotely. And the worst part is we get a rook end game at the end of this, which may or not may or not may or may not be tenable. Um uh, objectively speaking. Um Subjectively, this is going to be super difficult to hold. Shit. Okay, that actually helps me quite a bit. Drop back here. Uh, yep. Whoops, that's not a queen. That's a rook. You got me. You got me. All right. Yeah. I left a checkmate. Did I have a checkmate? I didn't think I had a mate there. If I had a mate, I'm more exhausted than I thought. Man, nobody takes the pawn. Here, take the pawn, will you please? Thank you. All right. Things I gotta do to make people take my pawns. It's like, really? What happened to the days when you could actually gambit material when opponents would take it? Good old days of chess. Nowadays, they don't even want the material. Just put all the pawns on light squares. Um, and all the pieces on dark squares, apparently. Yep, he did spot that. I'm going to sack here because I'm bored. 
Is that a good reason to sack material? What do you guys think? I think it's a good reason. Alright, we just beat the number nine player there. Yeah, I used to like have Nightbot here policing everything, and people repeatedly complained about it. So then I installed um, Phantom Bot here instead. And while it does have some sort of profanity filter, apparently it's not ad as advanced as I had thought it would be. Um... So I'm not sure what to do next about all that. Please let the mate in one happen. Nope. Never lucky. Never lucky. Alright, so fine, I've got to go back. We actually have to play a game of chess here with our opponent who fell asleep at the wheel. Or we don't. We'll take it. Are you talking about this chat room? Yeah. I could see that. I don't think they have a profanity. Well, they have something. I don't know exactly how all that works. I shouldn't have doubled down on that like I did. Um, okay, I defend my rook, which allows me to move my pieces if I have to, and I do have to. Oh boy. Um, I've got to protect and overprotect stuff, and it's not working. On the bright side, I got a nice little clump of pieces. Um, which in some way look aesthetic, but um, the not so bright side, my position collapses. But it looks beautiful as it's collapsing, so it's like a star just dying in the sky. How clever. Ha! He gets me on time. I'm not fast enough for this. Oh, shadow bands are pretty clever. They're efficient. Yeah, I wonder how profanity filters work in general. And if an open source solution could satisfy the majority need of um, what people need for filters. Obviously, if it could, somebody would have coded such a thing and released it already. And measures would have been found to circumvent it. So, 
Um, I'm going to say no, that's not a feasible problem to solve. Um, I've built this nice little fortress here. I'm just going to put all the pawns on the light squares. Damn it. So, there we go. Easy. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have sacked everything I just sacked there, but I feel confident for once. It's nice to have that feeling of confidence. Um, less nice to see that confidence just completely backfire, but, um, shit. <laughs> okay, uh, he, I just hung my queen, he didn't take it. Um, we're just gonna take this and check here. Uh, I so want to take that. It worked! Beautiful. So, um, that wasn't sound, by the way, but apparently I've got a 1950 rating, and at some point in this tournament I did cross 2000 before I started falling asleep, so. Um, this is our number one seed in the tournament, who went berserk here. Um, so he's just gonna crush me. It's going to be hilarious, I'm sure. Um, that's interesting. Nice. Very clever. Also nice! He's paying attention. Wow. Shit. Wait, that's not mate. Okay. I am impressed. Well played. Very nice. Bravo. Well, uh, that's the number one seed, and you can see why he's number one. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do this. C4? That's not C4. Okay. All right, we got a resignation from an opponent. Sorry for lack of commentary. Um, I've actually started to focus during this last game or two instead of just rambling the whole time, and maybe that's helped my play slightly. I think I'm going to place top ten if I can manage to play decently these last few games. Um...
It's funny when you can play moves like that. How often do you get to play that? Alright, so... Another beautiful move. And that's mate. That was funny. That was hilarious. So, that sort of thing is like why I used to be over 2000. Um, and, you know, if I focused during a game instead of just playing, like, silliness the whole time, uh, I can manage a decent bullet rating. Um, I don't know exactly what that rating is, but I'd like to think it's 2000. If I just had to guesstimate it, um, somewhere in that vicinity sounds right. But I don't know. Ratings are hard to guess. That's why we have to play the games. Um, I get the D4 is not sound there. Like, I totally get the stuff I just played there is... Oh, there we go. Mate in one. Thank you. Next opponent, please. Um. <sighs> so. That's what I get for commentating while playing a bullet game. I'm super slow and most of my mouse moves don't land where I want them to land. So me trying to commentate on top of that is just going to make everything go to crap. Um, I can see now why some people don't commentate as they play. Uh, they can play numerous hours of bullet on end and not commentate a single one of them. I am getting it now. Um. Wait, how is there time for another pairing? There's not even time for another game. Alright, fine, whatever. Nice. Alright, I'll give my opponent the points. Um, just to mess with the standings. Just because it gave me that pairing. And I have the liberty to mess with the standings. Who did I get paired with that last game? Zarathustra. So I got paired with the guy... Um, we well, gave two points to, so he got to take fourth instead of sixth. 
So I got to mess with the pairings by an early resignation there, but not in a way that hurt my standing. So, either way, have I made it to 2000 again? Where am I? 1991. Close enough. Alright, let's play one slow game to wind things down. Jeez, what a marathon. Have I ever practiced speed doing certain exercises? There's been just from playing games. I've not practiced speed as an exercise other than the coordinate trainer, other than playing StarCraft, other than... But no, I've not practiced speed with the mouse. I can't even get the mouse to land in the right squares. And I've done coordinate trainer. It's just this mouse is awful. Um, and that's me blaming the hardware, which you weren't interested in. You were just asking, like, have I done anything to practice? Um, all right. No, it doesn't register games um, that complete after the buzzer, and that's why I went Berserk the last game. Even though I was playing against, like, a guy who ultimately took fourth place in the event, who was in the top ten, whose rating, I think, outrated mine, I went Berserk anyway, and then I did the early resignation just to mess with the standings. Um, which I think is totally fine to do. It's just my way of protesting that, like, some games count and other ones don't. So, um... Let's see. I mean, I guess this develops the bishop, in a way. Got a nice symmetrical pawn structure, which is entirely my fault, because I have the white pieces. So, I should have played better. Um, so I'm going to at least try to put my pawns on light squares. If I, there's one thing I can do right, maybe it's that. So now I've played rook fe1. Oh! I fully expected a5. Is a5 not happening? what's happening in lieu of a5 because like now I get to play this and his pieces look a little bit silly and we get this dynamic pawn distribution I don't think that my pawn on e5 is any more effective than it would be on d4 but I just think it's completely ineffective on well yeah, no, I actually do think it'd be more effective on e5. What am I talking about? Um, let's put all my pawns on dark squares. Yeah. Other players make bullet look so easy. I make it just look ridiculous, because I don't play sane moves. Um, fine. You want me to put my bishop on this diagonal? I'll put it there. Oh, right. I walked straight into that. Um, that's okay. That's maybe okay. It's debatably survivable. Right, so... The notion here... So that I have the bishop, you have the knight. Um, so my position's not a complete loss. It's just disgusting. Um, I didn't expect my opponent to trade into this, because this is, like, unrewarding to try to win. It's a question of if, uh, who atrophies first. Um...
Well, yeah, now I get, like, his knight does dominate the bishop. That's not in question. At least in this position, it's not in question. What is in question is if in all future positions the knight will dominate the bishop, or just temporarily for who knows how many moves um, the advantage will be enjoyed by the knight. So this is ridiculous. This is me playing for activity. Um, So I'm fully inviting rook e4, which might win on the spot. I'm trying to encourage my opponent to play something that isn't boring. There we go. Um, and so my big idea here was this. And even if like, tactically, this doesn't hold. It's no worse than what I had a minute ago. Um, you can talk about such abstractions as knight versus bishop and such, but um, there's a lot going on in the position that's more than just a knight and a bishop. Sure, I guess we could play another one. Oh, I see. Knight g4. Oh, that's clever. So that demonstrates the dominance of the knight. But here I do get activity. Yeah, the knight should not have been so readily exchanged for the bishop. Um, at least temporarily the knight um, was advantageous to have. I think, um, well, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I don't like Rook E4 at all. Because that just lets my king back into the game. I am playing this in with the worst possible technique. I am ashamed. Um,
This sucks. I should not have done that. Goodness, I am out of my mind here. Alright. Well. Um. How did I get from the completely lost position to this one? Uh, some people will call it technique. Um. Let's see. Listening to the stream is an odd experience. Yeah, that's for sure. Listening while playing can be confusing, sure. Wow. Yeah, um... How did that happen? Like, I've read basically every endgame book that exists, so... Um... I happen to know that things like peace activity here are paramount. So that's like how I got this thing. It's because I've seen that pattern so many times before. Endgames are hard. Yeah. Even so, like, I messed it up here. I wonder what happened specifically. Um. Yeah, if you're 2200, I would recommend Devretsky. If you're not 2200, I might not recommend that. I might instead recommend, like, Silman's um, Endgame course. I might recommend, for more elementary players, Sierra Wands thing. I mean,. Things that are written by like international masters and above um, tend to be of decent quality. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, one of the co-authors of that. It's a very exciting project. A critical mistake was allowing the king to go to e3. So did I have a choice on that one? Oh, I should have just played like rook f7 and liquidated all the pawns and just said, you know, this is just not winning. Instead I got greedy. Um, but yeah, rook f7 anywhere around here, giving up my two kingside pawns, would have drawn this without any trouble. Uh, instead I played like a dope. Yeah, that was, this is too stubborn of me. I should have just accepted that this is not winnable. Um, so what did I mess up this game? Oh, I got this opening. I have no idea what's going on here. I just blanked because I've been doing chess here for multiple hours on this stream. And I played knight c3 against a French, and I've never played knight c3 against the French. Because it's not that great. Um, and because I don't know it. So, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking here. Somehow I thought I must have played d4 or something, or I don't even know. I don't know why I played that. Either way, uh, it's a sign that I'm not entirely focused here. So let's let's try a puzzle. I think oh no, I see I've got a challenge here. I guess I have to say yes to the challenge because everybody wants uh, their challenge. So let's say yes to that. But first, can I solve a puzzle? Can I do it? I don't even know. I want to take the pawn. Taking the pawn can't possibly work. Um. There's a lot of things I want to do here. I want to do rook g6. I want to do knight f3. Um, this is a hard one. I want to say it's like knight f5 randomly guessing because what else could it be here 
I don't I'm not finding any moves that make progress in this position. Um You guys thinking it's rook f4? Oh, that is a queen trap. Yep. We trapped a queen. What a great tactic. Alright, so we had a challenge here. Let's accept the challenge. Because why not? Alright. Taste of defeat. Very exciting. Um, the answer to your question, C9, is yes. <laughs> That's not the answer you were looking for. Um, I think one thing that helps considerably with the stockfish development is that there's this wonderful open source uh, testing and tuning framework which um, is heavily discussed um, and works excellently. So um, there's a very rigorous testing process and a way of um, having the parameter tuner evolve and um, apply new values for variables. Um, so you can, instead of having people having to go in and tweak the numbers themselves in all the formulas, there's a program that will automatically uh, apply the stochastic perturbation or simultaneous perturbation stochastic algorithm, SPSA, um, by Professor Spall of John Hopkins University. Um, just makes it so that um, Stockfish has all the magic numbers for all the formulas and can tune them at any time. Um, so... I am so confused. Bishop b3 is not a move in this opening. And it's just wreaking havoc on my mind here. Did I hear about... Yeah. I heard about that acquisition. I think it's kind of clever um, that uh, chess.com participate in some of this AI development stuff. It's very exciting. If nothing else, it makes them sound more credible to um, have done some sort of experimentation. It seems like even if you don't manage to make the best engine, you could maybe at least make something that's fantastic at detecting cheaters or something. Which I assume is their ultimate goal with that sort of thing. I assume they don't give a damn about... Um, having an engine which plays like a grandmaster, but would much prefer just having an engine that could tell them yes or no that somebody cheated. Um, not that that's how things work, but uh, at least that could be a goal for them. Um, hmm. so I am tempted. Wait. Knight f4 doesn't work. Knight f4 was tempting, but it doesn't at all work here. Right. This, on the other hand, has some opportunity uh, to maybe work. Oh, the fried liver. I mean, gosh, we're playing in Blitz. You think I'm going to play the main line two nights opening in Blitz? When we could play the fried liver? We're going to fry the liver all the time in Blitz. Um, 
I did play that in actual over the board tournaments too. Um, which is mad. You don't want to play this as part of your main repertoire. Um, you can get some pretty awesomely complicated positions uh, playing this stuff. Alright, so... Just develop a piece, you know? No threats here at all. Nope, definitely not threatening anything. Um, yeah, no, actually I did survive. But after the game, like, people who spectated the game did a post-mortem with me and informed me of just what a poor opening decision um, that is. And so I do have to modify my repertoire accordingly. I'm not going to be continuing to play that. I will eventually find something better. Um, Alright, so we're playing against Taste of Defeat, who's playing in a unique style here. Um, not sure what he's trying to do. I guess he just doesn't know the fried liver so much. Um... And I just caught him off guard. And this maybe isn't a stylistic choice. As much as just reacting to unforeseen circumstances. But yeah, in Blitz, the fried liver is such fantastic fun. How could you not play it? Um... Oh, I'm not winning the Rook. Uh, let me back up and try that again. I was going to take on D1, and I just double-checked myself before I wrecked myself. Oh, thank goodness there's an increment. Um, yeah. I think I played okay this game. Upgrade to the Grob. Yeah, we'll just play the Grob and the Spike all day. Just move that G-Pawn and move one every game. What's the worst that could happen? Or you gotta, like, learn an opening like the Cabbage. Um, or you just play the C-Pawn and the A-Pawn and the B-Pawn and... Yeah, that's the cabbage opening. It's uh, it's not that well reputed, not that well recognized. Um, but you just have to learn some openings like that. And then after the game, your opponent will look it up in a book and see, oh, my opponent played the cabbage. Interesting. Yeah. So I played okay that game. Uh, to put it mildly. Um, no, my, my opponent just uh, unfortunately dropped a piece. And, like, it just spiraled out of control after that. Like, uh, yeah, one mistake and that was it. Um, Bishop b3 caught me off guard. I should study what the heck happened here. Because, like... As many times as I've played this, I've, I don't remember bishop b3 being played on this move ever. Apparently I played a mainline response, and my opponent played d4, which just completely took me by surprise. It seems good, and that's what spooks me. That, like, my opponent played what's not theory 
not by a mile. Um, but what they played seems perfectly good. At least I'm pretty sure this is in theory. I've never heard of it. I know d4 has been played in other circumstances. And I thought queen f6 was what I'd previously researched and came up with here, but I couldn't remember it. Um... Yeah, a3 is by far more popular here. And then d4. And then black does this, and you know, stuff happens. You either do this, or the castle, or like all the things that could happen, happen. My own personal preference of how to play this stuff is to play queen d4 straight away, or queen e4 straight away. And Black's, um, Black recognizes that you're threatening a3, so they support the knight. I just throw this forward. Um, but like I said, I thought the fried liver was okay for Black. Wait, I'm sorry, you play a3 first, and then play this? Yeah. But... Don't take my advice. My teammates, I think, tell me, yeah, white should play castle. This is the new meta. And d4. And, like, black is lucky to survive this, I hear. Um, black didn't get the tempo to play knight c2. So yeah, d5 is more solid, but black's king is exposed in the middle of the board. Um, Stockfish somewhat favors white here. I think this um, adequately answers the fried liver, so don't play this fried liver in uh, game 60 or over the board serious tournament events. Um, Save it for Blitz. But in Blitz, yeah, if you've studied it, feel free to play it. Do I play any other Gambits? Um, probably. Like, if I go over here, and I go click on my Lee Chess Insights, and there's like something about what's the win rate of my favorite openings, Somewhere in here is probably a gambit. Um, also, from time to time, Teluge, um, Lee Chess user, makes some pretty awesome things. Um, like, he made this opening tree visualization thing. So go, like, look for this. I dropped the link in the chat here if I could. But go search for this by this user, Teluge, here. You can diagram the openings of yourself or any other Lee Chess player. That's exciting stuff. Um, there is a rate limit on the API, so be careful what you're requesting. But, um, yeah, you can get some pretty cool diagrams. If you really need a full explanation of everything that everybody plays, um, you can go somewhere there's a link to the uh, database of all the rated games that have been played on Lee Chess. I've probably played every opening at least once on Lee Chess, so yeah, I play all the gambits, I play all the openings. I pretty much just play random moves um, for opening moves to a large degree. Alright. Um, see, uh, I have been hosted... Let me go ahead and play one more, and then we'll wrap this up. No, that's okay. I was trying to link that anyway. And it looks like my bot isn't enforcing link blocking, and so I've got to go fix my bot. Um, but yeah, in general, that's a good thing to ask first. But So here's the other thing. Um, 
Apparently my opponent isn't interested in playing my pet opening against me. Uh, there are gambits that could have been played there. Instead, my opponent's just playing the most boring possible way a person could play this opening. Um, and people do score wins playing this. That's why they play it. But um, black can certainly win some of these too. Have I heard of the Bong Cloud? Yes. The Coca-Cola Gambit? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've... Um... Yeah, no, like... There was a phase where I just played every opening just randomly. I thought it offered me some sort of advantage to do that. And after I lost enough games, I realized, you know, that was a pretty dumb idea. But, no, I have pretty much played every opening. Either intentionally or otherwise. Yep, I've heard of the Sodium Attack and the Sodium Defense. I've heard of the Fred Defense. We've got the Polish, the Orangutan, the Spike, the Grob, the Borg. You name it, I've probably heard of it. And probably played it in at least one Blitz game. Um, and then there's openings you haven't heard of. Things where I just decide, you know, I want to push all my pawns today. So I push all the pawns. Um, those aren't necessarily sound and don't necessarily have names. But I have played them. Alright, so this pawn on d3 is kind of a target. Alright, so of course they plug the e4 square. Um, fine, I'll oppose this bishop then. And, you know, we'll get a nice, exciting endgame. Every opening has a name, you say. I mean, if I invented an opening and I didn't name it, it doesn't have a name at that point. Like, one time I invented this line of the Anderson where Black gives up two or three pawns in the opening. Pretty much for no reason other than for laughs. Um, so, I mean, you could call that an Anderson, but um, that would be kind of an insult. So, I'd much rather consider that the opening has no name. But, yeah, I guess use your imagination. Also, my microphone keeps moving on me. So if you ever hear it, like, bumping or clicking or something, that's why. I keep adjusting it back so it doesn't fade out as much. Alright, so can I play f5 here, winning material? No. That knight's not hanging. So just play g6 and then take the half open file. And maybe at some point brace my f pawn down the board. I don't know. Truly inspired play. I mean, to my opponent's credit, they haven't made any blunders. Um, other than selecting a terribly dull opening, which maybe is not a blunder. Hmm. 
Maybe they just enjoy boring chess. Quite a few people do. There we go. So now I've got a space advantage. I've stopped him from doubling on the D file for the time being. Um, I don't have any direct tactical threats. Well, no, I could just plug my knight on D3. Uh, so he needs to play something to stop that. Namely, he needs to play B4. And he does. Um, so instead I'm going to try to play to get my knight on f3. Right, right, right. I don't have time to calculate, so I'm probably going to just blunder a piece outright. But if I don't, then maybe I can win this. Okay, let's check here. And so now we got two knights on the sixth. So that's a pretty nice position. Um, then we'll force the liquidation of one of these rooks. and then just collect a pawn. This doesn't really win the pawn, but um, it does make my life a lot easier here. It certainly feels like I'm up a pawn. And we're going to play this out to mate, apparently, says the opponent. Um, they're well within their rights to do that, understanding that, like hell, there's going to be a rematch. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's kick this. Take one of those, one of these, and go hunt this guy down, and then take one of those. Ha! <laughs> That's a pretty pathetic defense. Okay. I take the pawn just to say, like, I'm paying attention, dude. Um, so, but yeah. At least they did manage to concede that in the end. So, what have I missed while I was focusing on the game? Yeah, there's a lot of weird names for openings. Um, in any event, I think we've had some good chess games today. Did get the rating back over 2,000, somehow. Yeah. Um, let's see, do I have my user style command? For those of you curious how I get that, uh, that's um, the way that you can apply this user style. Check this out, the redirects to userstyles.org. If that link ever moves, um, my short URL should redirect once I fix it, so. Um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, lately I've just been working on my bot here, um, which apparently isn't playing a game at the moment, but 
Like, if you ever see Go to Leisure Bot just playing any old variant, I got that up and going. I've lately been trying to make that master anti chess just to put that, I don't know, put it out there that, like, um, variants other than anti chess are more interesting to play against it. I think I've done everything I can to make it as strong as possible with the anti chess variant. Um, and that's fine. So yeah, you see there's like a variety of Leelas that all play on the site. Um, which is pretty cool. If you want to see multiple bot games going on at once, well, too bad. There's only one. Um, but yeah, you can feel free to go ahead and challenge this bot out here. I'd recommend anything other than anti-chess because it's actually trying its hardest to win. Um, it's got like this 2500 or 2300, I forget. 2300 anti-chess rating. And I'm trying to make this as strong as possible, this one, but have it just have more fun in general than all the other variants. But this is a stockfish, like single CPU stockfish just playing. Um, playing very quickly at Ultra Bullet and Bullet and such. Um, so it's playing a lot faster than the other bots, because it's not trying as hard to win. Except for anti-chess, where it'll just go all out and, like, but yeah. Uh, it plays Crazy House, it plays King of the Hill, it plays all of these. Getting that all tested and integrated was good fun. So that's one of my more recent projects I worked on. So, yeah, that's the one where you try to lose all your pieces. People say it's underrated. I'm not so sure. The one thing is it it has successfully avoided losing on time. Um, but it tends to play very fast, and it's not as human-like as Leela, because like, I'm not having it play as fast as possible. But, you know, I just put it out there in case people wanted to try to train against it instead of against um, the play against the machine button. Because this one's a bit stronger, I think. I tried to put something out there that's not quite as strong, that's maybe more fun to play against. Um, that could also play rated games if you're into that sort of thing. But I don't think it's overrated or underrated. I think the ratings must be accurate. Um, no, I just think that it plays much too quickly at some variants and tends to blow some pretty easy positions. So um, it's kind of funny in that respect. People think of uh, Leela as being the only engine that blunders, and that's a very human thing to blunder. But no, I think uh, Godel does. Uh, reasonable job trying to emulate that but also plays quite strongly um, I think its ratings are accurate no more no less but I could be mistaken I guess let me know whatever if there's a bug let me know if there's an exploit let me know I'll do everything I can to try to fix these things in as timely as manner as possible because people care about this stuff so it's good that people care Anyhow, it's been quite a stream here. Uh, thanks for watching. It's been fun. Um, come back with some other games some other time. And I'll uh, see you next time. Have a good night.